Ferrari is a company with a reputation for real flair in design and engineering. But perhaps most of all, it is an absolute master of self-promotion. So, it's quite surprising how few show-stopping concept cars the Prancing Horse has actually produced over the years. Perhaps it's just that every Ferrari that makes it to production is pretty much a concept car anyway these days. Far from old man Enzo's legendary mistrust of embracing any modern technological advances, the modern Ferrari moves the game on at breakneck speed. But while there have been long spells of inaction, when Ferrari has turned its hand to a vaporware concept, it's been something to really behold. Here's a few you should remember. And if you watch this video and you think to yourself, ooh, that's pretty cool, then do remember to give it a like, and then subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon to make sure you see absolutely everything from Goodwood Road and Racing. Look, it's not just an overgrown Dino, okay? The 365P was actually one of Ferrari's bolder 1960s experiments. In fact, designed without the knowledge of Enzo Ferrari, as the engineers knew that Il Commodentori thought mid-mounting a V12 was just far too dangerous for a road car. The Speciale was the brainchild of Pininfarina and Luigi Cinetti Jr., the son of the former racing driver who would become the first Ferrari dealer in the US. Using the 365P2 racer as its base, the 365P Berlinetta Speciale also used the racing car's engine a 380 horsepower 4.4 liter V12. Where the Speciale differed from its racing sister was the driving position. Decades before the McLaren F1 made it seem exciting and exotic, the 365P Berlinetta Speciale sat the driver in the middle with the passengers flanking. In the end, two were actually built after Fiat Supremo Gianni Agnelli spotted it on a show round of the Ferrari factory and demanded a pair for his personal collection. Filippo Sapino is perhaps better known for spending three decades designing cars for Gia. There he penned such classics as Ford's RS200. But before he jumped Italian coach-building ships, he was at Pininfarina for two years, where he was the man who brought the wedge to Ferrari. This concept car's name is totally misleading. It has nothing to do with the 512, be it race or road car. In fact, the 512S Berlinetta Speciale was developed on the recovered chassis of a Ferrari 312P that had run out of usefulness after being curled up into a ball in a crash at Monza. Pininfarina stepped in, requisitioned the wreck and turned it into a show car. Just to confuse you even more, it also didn't have the 3.0-litre V12 from the 312P. Instead, absolutely heaving a 6.0-litre V12 from the 612 Can-Am car underneath that angular bodywork. Well. Sort of. The car that was shown was just that. A show car. All dressing and words. There are even contemporary images of it having to be dragged into a quarry by a JCB for one of those classically bonkers 1960s photo shoots. Even with that complete lack of power, the 512 was an absolute showstopper at the time, with its extremely low form, flat rear deck, stunning aerodynamic louvres, and the lift-up canopy so de rigueur for such wedgy concepts. This one, this is the big old Ferrari wedge that everyone remembers. Long before our friend Jim Glickenhaus brought it back to life and got it running again, the 512 Modulo was legendary. This one was actually based on a real 512. To be precise, the 512S sports car, albeit in brutal Can-Am spec. The Modulo was the work of Paolo Martin at, you guessed it, Pininfarina, and looks like something for one of those slightly drug-induced sci-fi films of the period. At its debut at the 1970 Geneva Motor Show, the 512 Modulo had to compete for the title of Ultra Wedge Supremo with the Lancia Stratos HF. The Stratos itself looked like it would function as a letter opener, but even it looked restrained and sensible compared to the Modulo's cut-out arches, bisecting body line, and the 24 speed holes that allowed a teasing glimpse of its 500 horsepower V12. It was said 
that the 512S Modulo would have been able to hit 60 miles an hour in 3.3 seconds and go on to reach a top speed of 220 miles an hour, 17 years before the F40 just about managed to reach those kinds of figures. To be honest, we're actually amazed it can't travel the interstellar highways. Before we move on to the rest of our list, just want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And if you do like it, asking you if you wouldn't mind clicking that like button and then subscribing to the channel to make sure you see everything from us at Goodwood Road and Racing. No, this is not the fever dream of a Vauxhall Senator owner. It is a real Ferrari concept car. One of the um, unintended consequences of Fiat's protracted takeover of Ferrari was that Enzo found himself being chauffeured around in, of all things, a Fiat 130. A car that was definitely big and comfortable enough, but lacked, well, pretty much any styling. Certainly not for the old man's tastes. So, when Pininfarina Jr. suggested to Ferrari that his company could design a Maranello rival to the Mercedes 450 SEL 6.9 or Maserati Quattroporti, Enzo wasted no time in saying yes. The eventual show car took the chassis of Ferrari's 400 Tourer and stuck an engine mock-up inside. Designer Leonardo Fioravanti attempted to hide as much of the Pinin's four-door saloonness as possible, and frankly, he failed. But it was a valiant effort, and it led to some cool design features. Smoked glass was used instead of metal for the A and B pillars. The pinion had an extremely exaggerated C pillar, and the door handles were hidden deep inside a body crease. A new design of headlight from Lucas allowed a low bonnet line alongside a grille designed to ape the early Ferraris of the 1950s. Later in life, one pinion was given actual running gear including the V12 from a Ferrari 512BB, and it can be seen from time to time cruising up and down the Pacific Coast Highway in California. Hmm, hard life, eh? Um, right. I guess not all concept cars have to make the jaw drop. The Ferrari 408 4RM certainly didn't. It's perhaps fairer to say that the 4084 RM was a proof of concept rather than a pure concept car, since it wasn't just an out there machine to get some PR value or to test the public's reaction to a new design language. It was actually a technological testbed, trying out a brand new four wheel drive system. It was the product of the then new Ferrari engineering division, set up as an internal research and consultancy division under the management of engineer Mauro Forieri largely responsible for the company's huge F1 success in the 1970s. The 408 was a testbed for a potential four-wheel drive mid-engine supercar using an innovative hydraulic all-wheel drive setup. Just two were built, the second featuring a bonded aluminium chassis years before the Lotus Elise would do the same. Forieri would be poached by Lee Iacocca to join Lamborghini and, surprise, surprise, the latest Lambo, the Diablo, was four-wheel drive. Does this look familiar? Well, if it does, either you're the Sultan of Brunei, and if so, welcome your, um, excellency? Or you spent large parts of your youth playing Test Drive 3 in an arcade. Well, that or you're noticing the similarities to the Testarossa, which is the base car for the Mythos. The styling was very much of its time, straddling the morphing moment between the straight lines of the 80s and the upcoming 90s blobs. But it does work, just. And it worked enough that the Sultan of Brunei ordered a pair for his vast private collection. Elsewhere, the styling would influence the F50, as you could probably tell from that colossal rear wing. This video is full of legendary designs. Fourieri, Pininfarina, Sapino, etc. Those whose eye for detail is legendary and will stand the test of time. Luigi Colani, well, he was a little bit out there. No offence, some of his designs were outright fantastic, but there wasn't much danger of something Colani designed really being usable in the real world. Colani called his design philosophy biodynamic basing it on rounded forms that took inspiration from nature. He was convinced that in this direction lay better performance 
and efficiency. To test this theory, he decided to set a new speed record at Bonneville. Kalani started with a Ferrari Testarossa and created his Testa Doro, which translates as golden head. Other than having four wheels and being red, the Testa Doro looked absolutely nothing like its red-headed sister. It had a completely rounded off and lengthened nose and tail. The flat 12 in the Testarossa was then turbocharged by Lotec just to make sure it won, which it did, finishing top of its class on the salt flats. Sadly, that didn't mean a new record, as the Testadoro clocked 211 miles an hour, two miles an hour slower than the production record of its day held by Roof's CTR Yellowbird. That car disappeared for a couple of years before emerging again in 1993 in an even more extreme form, this time as a pure styling exercise. Now, a massively extended low nose led into an extreme wraparound canopy and a split rear window gave a view of the gold-painted air intakes that handed the Testadoro its name. It is absolutely bonkers. Those are seven concept cars that have had Ferrari badges that we absolutely love, or at least remember strongly. But which one's your favorite? Which one would you like to have seen made? Let us know in the comments below.